Everybody on this planet is related. It, it's a fact. We're related by common ancestry. Everybody on this planet has like 99% of the same DNA that I have. That's a fact. And that goes for you. That goes for everybody. We're all basically the same. That's one of the reasons why I don't get this whole race thing. People have these racial issues. I just don't get it. I, I make that comment a lot that you know what we everybody on this planet including my raven sam my dog ike remy my pigeon my son solar this is remy she is the mother of my son solarton we're we're all related and there seems to be this this misconception that i'm like i'm talk i'm talking shit and i'm not it's just it's a fact that you and and every other animal on this planet shares similar DNA. That is a fact. A mouse has, I don't know what the percentage is, but it would have to be pretty high. And I'll, t I'll tell you why it would have to be pretty high. Is because even the banana plant shares about 50% of the DNA that you have. So how can you think that like, th see, this is the whole thing with animals. Like I, I, I just, I, I don't get it. There's this like thing about like smart animals, you know, deserve, deserve respect or more respect than like a stupid animal. I, I see it all the time. Like it's always like save the dolphins, save the elephant that they think is crying and having a funeral, Sa save them, of course. But then like there's like this like dis disregard for everything else. I was pulling up weeds this morning and I'm thinking while I'm pulling up the weeds, I'm like, you know, it's a plant, it's alive and here I am killing it. It just seems sort of absurd that for human beings and every other thing on this planet to exist, something's always like in this, you know, something's always dying. I, I don't know. It's just, it's just absurd. It, it, you really are. I'm not lying when I say that about the banana, which by the way, that plant, the plant is classified as an herb and the, the fruit itself is, is considered a, a berry. Now why that is, I don't know, but that, that's a fact. I look at that thing and I think, I think of the pawpaw tree, which I have, I have several in the, in this yard. It's, it sort of reminds me of the pawpaw tree, except it really doesn't. They both have tap roots. They're not really related. They're related like I'm related to you. They're, they're about that, that close related. They're, not, they're not, not really that similar. They're just similar genetically speaking. But the, the pawpaw tree, the pawpaw tree is a freak, seriously. It is an absolute freak. Its flowers don't attract bees it attracts beetles it attracts beetles and flies the flower smells i've smelled it it doesn't smell the way i'm gonna say it smells it smells like rotten meat but if you smell it i don't smell rotten meat it smells like rotten meat to a fly or a beetle it's a it's a freaky tree it's the largest fruit indigenous to the united states yet we don't see pawpaw fruit in in stores we we don't see pawpaw fruit it's 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 absurd it has a very short shelf life and it's sort of delicate but it just it seems like we should see it flower see the good, real green part with the dust on it those are the beginnings of a pawpaw there's other aspects about the tree that sort of make it well no it really doesn't i, I, I was going to say like climate you know, zone zone five, and it has to have a um, it has to have some wintering. It has to have some cold temperatures. So you ca you can't grow this thing in Florida, but you, you have to have two pawpaw trees. They're not gonna. There's there's a couple that are they say are self fertile, but it's I'm not, I'm not sure. I have one of them, a sunflower pawpaw, supposedly self fertile. But you have to have two trees, and that the flower that supposedly smells like you know, rotting flesh, it goes through two stages. One stage where it's open and receptive to pollen, and then the other stage where it turns into male and pollinates. So that's that's what I've been doing lately, but I'm, si I'm sick of it, pawpaw tree. I want fucking fruit. 
Now, I might overburden some of the, the pawpaw trees that, that do have flowers, but I'm gonna have fruit, I don't give a shit. If it looks like I'm gonna have a lot, I'll take it off and not stress the tree out so much. But I want fruit. But yes, the pawpaw tree probably has, you know, if a banana tree has about 50% of a human, of human DNA, so, you know, a, a pawpaw tree would too. And I know that there's a lot of people that are saying, Oh yeah, it's Cain. He, he, he's, he's a hoaxer. This notion that I hoax stuff about Bigfoot and Dogman, it's bullshit. I'm, a, I'm into science is what it is. I'm, I'm clearly into science. So I'm not about hoaxing. And if you don't think that a banana has about 50% of your DNA, go check. And that goes for a mouse, Sam the Raven. We're all related by common ancestry. We're all from this planet. So when you're digging in your garden and you hurt the worm, know that, you know, that that worm isn't that far from you. It's, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not saying go out and hug trees and shit. I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, it's a freaky thing that we're here, okay? It's weird that we're on this planet. It's weird that we're isolated on this planet. And it's also really strange that religion's a thing. Like we know about our mortality where the, the, the pawpaw tree that has probably 50% of our DNA has no idea of mortality. And that would go for Sam the Raven or, you know, Ike. Yeah, there's a, there's a will to survive, but there's not like this like conscious thing of like, you know, oh, I got. I'm gonna die soon, so I gotta make up something to make it more comfortable for me to die. We're the only ones that do that. We're, we're, you know, don't don't bring up art and chimps. I don't, you know, I'm not really sure if, you know, Coco the gorilla was doing a painting. Probably, probably, it's enjoying to do, but out there in the wild, I don't, I don't know if there's any well i was i was gonna say if there's any cases of animals making art and then i'm thinking about birds that build nests so that thought is incorrect that animals i guess do make art besides us so yeah i guess coco the gorilla could paint sure why not but we are we're, we're all the same so when you're when you're well we're not all the same that's just it we're not all the same but no, when you're digging around in the garden, wh whatever it is, I mean, if, if you have a bug in your house, I was talking to a friend of mine, that she does the same thing that, that I do. Like, she takes the bug out, like, I'm not gonna kill it. I can just move it outside. Why am I, why, why, why am I gonna kill it? I don't know. Not that, not that I won't kill bugs, I do. I was talking about it the other day. I have like insecticide, you know. I'll, I'll kill a mouse. It's coming in my house. I can't have rodents in there. That's not healthy. I, I, just to acknowledge it. I don't, I don't know. That's all I'm saying is like maybe everybody could just try and acknowledge that when they're eating the hamburger that it was a cute cow. Pigs. Pigs. I hear it all the time. Everybody says it like, oh, they're smart. Oh, as if they were stupid, then it would be okay to eat them. I eat pork. I'm just saying I have issues with it. I've always had issues with it. But yes, I do eat meat. We're stuck on this planet. It seems like we're supposed to eat meat, aren't we? Where are you gonna get your B12 from? It doesn't that, isn't that only from like animal source? I mean, how, how, are, you, how are you gonna get B12? You gotta eat eggs or milk or something, meat. Or you get, you get pernicious anemia and you get real sick. You can get B12, they can make it in a lab. It's totally synthetic, so don't don't tell me it's a natural diet. I'm just saying that the natural diet for a human being is, uh, God, I mean, like, I think of this science fiction movie that I wanted to write, and it's about vampires that do, they come to this planet. I, I th you know, like, w what do they want? What, you know, they come here, they want to, uh, you know, they want our keratin. That's what they want. They just want us for that. And then they're like, you know, we, we sit in these like chairs and they feed us and like, you know, we defecate into tubes and stuff. And they just keep taking our hair and our nails 
and our skin. He's, uh, I don't, I don't have any favorites. Yeah, I do. Remy. Remy's my favorite, aren't you, Remy? Fuck yeah, Remy, Remy sleeps by my face. She wakes me up in the morning. She's, she's, she's very nice. She is, she is absolutely the nice, one of the nicest people I've ever known. She is, look at her. She's playing for the camera too. She's, has she's bobbing her head. She's a green. She's a, she's a green with me. If I, if I was a pigeon, I would be living underneath a bridge with Remy. It's the truth. Yeah, we're best friends, aren't we, Remy? She is. She's, 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 she's a great pal. She'll, she'll go with me in the car up there. She, see. He doesn't know. He's a, he's a raven. So, you know, like, he wants to play. His idea of playing might be to uh, grab, my, grab my leg, like grab my pant leg or something. Right, Remy? Remy's the same way, sort of. Just she's nicer and more gentle. She's female. Sammy's male. He wants, you know, he wants to fuck around. She, she, she will, too. Birds want to um, sort of fight. They, they want to fight, and I, that's another thing that I don't think people understand, that they, they will wrestle. Like, they, they want to wrestle with you, and that's even uh, part of, like, courtship is, like, you'll see that the male and female pigeon get in these knockdown, drag-out fights before they mate. She would rather be on my shoulder than like sitting in front of the camera. She wants she wants to be hanging out with me She is she's a very affectionate bird But the, th the thing about birds is that people don't get is that they they communicate with their beak so that that hard keratin that that's like a like a fingernail material and that can hurt even with a bird this size. See, she's agreeing with me. She will peck me to wake me up in the morning and she'll peck me like right underneath the eye and it, it really hurts. She can also, with that little beak, this is a small bird, she can grab skin and pull skin. So don't, don't think that a small bird is, you know, you could get away with like uh, not getting bit or it's not going to hurt. Some of the smaller birds like cockatiels, Cockatiels, man, you get bit by a cockatiel, ow. You're gonna bleed. You are gonna bleed. It's a it's a different kind of pain. It's a sharper pain. It's more like getting bit by like a squirrel. Uh, like you get bit by a macaw. That that's painful too. That's that's bone crunching pain. It's different. Sam's beak is, you know, Sammy can my my raven, that's who I'm talking about. I have a African hybrid raven and he can take meat and and just rip it so he can do the same thing with your skin I've had Sam like grab my skin and shake it sort of like a dog would do when they when they want to you know um, inflict damage now the zebra swallowtail they have like this symbiotic relationship with this plant I believe they have to lay their, their eggs only on a semina triloba. Like they won't lay them anywhere else. So, so if you're related to a banana, you're related to a pawpaw tree, you will have DNA that's similar. Are you related to the swallowtail butterfly? Yeah, probably. You're, we're related to everything on this planet. It's just a fact. Some people treat their dogs like livestock, and it's hard for me to cop an ad attitude with them because it seems like all animals on this planet are more like all other animals on this planet and, and not like us. So if somebody thinks that the dog should be outside, like look at mushers. They leave their sled dogs outside during the dead of winter. I personally, I think it's horrible, but it's really hard for me to cop too much of an attitude because I'm fine with cows being out in a field. So why would a dog be any problem? See what I'm saying? So it's it's difficult. People, I, I'm I'm not gonna mention who this is, but 
uh, like people let their cats go outside and that's sort of like this like you know there's no leash law for cats so cats you know go outside and eat birds and shit and I think that they're responsible for something like it's some outrageous number just in the United States alone it's four billion I think four billion birds maybe it's more than that it's in the billions um, you know, songbirds dying, stuff like that. Cats are a environmental disaster on a small scale. They kill everything that is within like one block radius. They, they, they kill it. If, if it's moving, they're going to kill it. Whether it's a bug, a lizard, a mouse, a chipmunk, they'll kill it. I have a real, my cat lives inside. He doesn't kill any, anything. I have a real problem with owners like letting their cats do, you know, just roam around killing shit. But, you know, what can I, what can I say? That's, that's what they do with their pet. That's not what I would do with my pet. 